Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're all very welcome. My name is Terry Tooley, and I'll be your master of ceremonies for today. Bef just to let you know that this conferring ceremony is streaming live on internet, so if, if anybody couldn't make it today, if they log into YouTube, they can watch it online. A couple of announcements before we start. There are seven emergency exits from this auditorium. One to the left, one to the right of the stage here, two in each of the glass walls at the side, and one at the back where you came in earlier on. Could I ask you please to switch off all mobile phones before we start the proceedings? The formal proceedings today begin with the academic procession. Could I now invite you to please stand for the academic procession? Thank you, Michael. Please be seated. I will begin by introducing the members of the conferring panel to you. To my right is Mr. Tony Brazel, member of the governing body of Limerick Institute of Technology. In the centre is Professor Vincent Canaan, President of Limerick Institute of Technology. And finally, Ms. Marion Duggan, Head of the Faculty of Business and Humanities. I now call on Mr. Tony Brazel, Member of the Governing Body of Limerick Institute of Technology, to address you. Good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special and red letter day for all of us here at LIT, not just for the graduates, but for us as, on the staff and the governing body. And in the name of the governing body and our chairman, Mr. Niall Green, I welcome you to this conferring ceremony for the Applied Social Sciences and Food and Tourism. I'm sure many of you are probably here for the first time ever in, 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 within the the building itself, so you have a great opportunity to see the, the breadth and the width of what we do here and to experience the different threads of graduates that we have 
who are going on into the world to uh, take on, for the most part, their first employments. The, um, the one thing we would say to students always is that this is your big day, but do please remember your friends here in the audience, many of whom have made huge sacrifices to get you here today. And we want to make sure that you don't ever forget that and in life ahead that you recognise that assistance and that help that you will uh, carry for the rest of your life. Without that type of solidarity, you would not have been able to benefit from the dedicated efforts that the teaching staff here and support staff have put into your education and training and more widely into your development as people and citizens. You've made friendships here and they're important for your future life. You've helped each other through the past few years and an effort, and an effort to maintain those links in the future is very much to be desired. Social, business, political and interest groups, networks are increasingly important in all our lives and they are all the better when they are based on the friendships and mutual support which have been forged while here in the college. Today you are graduating as one of the most highly educated generation that Ireland has known. This is something we should all remember and take pride in. Uh, when I graduated it was good to have a leaving cert. Now, if you don't go to third level, you're not, you're not at the races. Indeed, half of the workforce nowadays have third level education. And it's to your advantage to know that not only are you going into a world where work and you know, skills are necessary, but that you're coming into an economy which has come out of 10 years of recession, and now you're facing the great opportunities that face us. One of the things that we should remember, too, is that Every day we, we read in the papers about new, new jobs being created lo locally. Uh, one of the great things that I, as a member of the governing body, see that we here in LIT are producing graduates for the needs of the industrialists and the business people who are coming to set up in the region. So that last year, for example, nine out of every ten graduates we're immediately into employment or else into further education. So there's a wonderful success flow for people who, <clears throat> who complete their studies and go on. And indeed, we would all say, indeed, your education doesn't finish at the doorstep here because in later life, whether it's sandwich courses, whether it's master's courses or whatever, <clears throat> please keep at it. No matter how old you are, you're always learning. And to improve your lot in life and to get your promotions in your companies, you do need that extra push which can be given beyond what you get today. One, one, of, the, one, of, the, uh, one of the things that generally uh, comes to, to mind is that in, in, the, in the world of today, education is for the future and it's for the needs. One of the strong points of this institution is that we're listening and talking at all times to all of the employers existing and future coming into the area so that our courses are absolutely in line with what they need and if they're not, we're quite happy to put on courses to help to adjust to get people into those positions. So, you know, LIT probably, of all the institutions, has been at the forefront. But we, we should also recognise something that here in Limerick, we're actually a student hub. There are over 25,000 third level students here in Limerick as we speak. That's a huge number. And that's why when I go to meetings announcing new industries for the area, they always say two things why they come here. One is proximity to an airport and the other is the pool of labour that's available to them and the, the quality of the academic standing of the institu institutions, whether it's UL, Mary I or LIT. So that's a great endorsement of us and it's a great calling card for all of us, for our students present and future. So with those few words I say welcome to all of you. It's been a great uh, experience to have you. There's a great sense of 
satisfaction from all my colleagues here on the stage. And maybe having said that, I'd like to, on behalf of the governing body, to say a thank you to the student, to the staff, as well as the students, for their great work in bringing this day possible. So well done to all of you, and thank you for your contribution. And to all of you as graduates, I wish you well in the future, and no doubt we'll be hearing a lot more from you in the future. Thank you. I now call on Ms. Marion Duggan, Head of the Faculty of Business and Humanities, to address you. Chairman, President, distinguished guests, academic staff, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Graduates, you are the reason for this celebration. This is your day. The day when years of study are formally recognised and rewarded. In a few moments, each of you will be centre stage, and rightly so. Enjoy the spotlight, you've earned it. Graduation is one of life's milestones. You're leaving behind the safety and security of college for the uncertainty and adventure of the rest of your life. You have no idea what the future will hold, as life will no doubt, doubt throw up some surprises along the way, and indeed, you may find your career taking a different path from that planned. However, your qualification is akin to having the safety of a life belt. It will keep you afloat until you find your particular niche. In addition to your own persistent effort, today is an opportune time to remember your parents, siblings, partners, children, relatives and friends who, in their own way, have put considerable effort into your reward through the love, encouragement, counsel and financial support they have provided to you. As you look back over the journey that brought you to this day, I look back over the past year and wish to acknowledge a number of achievements within the academic departments. The Department of Applied Social Sciences continues to expand its programme portfolio. The delivery of a BA Honours Degree programme in Community Development commenced here in Moilish this September. Validation was obtained for two new postgraduate programmes, a Master of Arts in Leadership and Management in the Community and Voluntary Sector, and a Master of Arts in Global Youth Work with Games and Digital Media. These part-time programmes involve a blended learning format, whereby the direct delivery of classes is combined with technology to allow those in full-time employment to access these programmes. The Department has also enhanced its research interests by establishing two new research groups under the Social Sciences Connections Collective. One of Ireland's leading educationals, Professor Tom Collins, spoke at the event to, in to initiate Engage, a research group which aims to explore the policy practice domains of education, youth work and community development. John Lonigan, former Governor of Mount Chow Prison, provided the keynote speech to launch the Ascend Research Group, which aims to focus upon engagement through research with service users, practitioners and leaders within the field of social care, and thereby contribute to the development of new thinking, new knowledge and new ways of measuring capacity building within this sector. In keeping with the aim to embed a culture of research in social care practice, the title of this year's annual undergraduate research conference held by the department in April was Research in Practice. This conference, at which many of the graduates here today presented, reflects the potential for our graduates as social care workers to provide particular insights into the lives of the people they work with. In his keynote speech at the conference, Father Peter McFerry, campaigner for the homeless, emphasised that point by stating we must use research to inform policy. It has also proven to be a busy year for the Department of Food and Tourism. The Department developed and obtained validation for two Level 8 programmes in Food Management and Innovation. The first is a Bachelor of Arts Honours degree, which will serve as a progression route for graduates of the Level 7 programme in Culinary Arts delivered by the Department. The second is a Higher Diploma Conversion programme, tailored to equip business graduates with both additional skills and education necessary for a career in food management and innovation. Both these programmes aim to immerse the student in concepts of food management and innovation, 
with an emphasis on new product development to ensure excellence across a wide range of food business environments. The department also sought and gained validation for a four-year Abinicio Honours degree in beauty and spa management. This programme emphasised the importance of business acumen to manage within the beauty and spa service sector, as well as excellence in technical skills across a range of spa and beauty treatments and therapies. The new facilities required to enable delivery of these new exciting programmes are proposed to be put in place in the near future. The importance of engagement in industry to the activity of the Department of Food and Tourism is illustrated in a number of events that have taken place over the last year. The Department hosted a Tourism and Hospitality Recruitment and Careers Fair in response to demand for our ministry, with hotel establishments such as Dermolan Castle, Adair Manor and Radisson Blue in attendance. Showcasing the very best of Irish hospitality, 80 students from the department generously volunteered for each of the three days of the World Barbecue Championships held recently in People's Park, Limerick. Our culinary students hosted whole hogs, smoked ribs and jar killed chicken, while our event management and hospitality students provided practical assistance and support, high levels of customer care and surety throughout the entire event. As part of the Pigtown series, our students and lecturers planned, prepared and served a special piglet dinner on October the 18th to celebrate locally produced and sourced products and showcase the importance and value of the pig to the heritage, culture and economy of Limerick. Yes Chef Ireland, the magazine for lovers of good food, hosted the annual Yes Chef Awards dinner in the Strand Hotel Limerick last week. Our culinary arts students and lecturers produced dishes for 400 guests attending. One other achievement to mention is the Student Connect mentoring programme piloted in the Department of Food and Tourism last year, but which is now fully embedded within the department. The ultimate aim of this programme is to provide a friendly and caring introduction for first-year students through the facilitation of student-to-student -student help and encouragement. This is a student-led programme whereby our now experienced mentors advise new mentors who in turn mentor the department's new first year students to help them settle into college life. All of these achievements would not have been possible without the academic staff behind me. Graduates, these lecturers have worked hard for you and with you to bring you to this day. So please join me in showing our appreciation to them. It is worth mentioning, too, that a college like this is made up of many different components and many different people who have contributed to your time here at LIT. Think, for instance, of the administration staff, student service, caretakers in the estate's office, library staff and technical support staff. I thank these persons on your behalf. Now I wish to thank administration staff of the faculty here on the Moylish campus, namely Anne Reedy, Claire Allen, Anne O'Leary and Raquel Cox for their dedication and hard work. I also thank all those involved behind the scenes in making today's ceremony run seamlessly and acknowledge specifically the efforts of Linda Barry. So a final few words to the graduates. It has been said that for you to succeed you need three kinds of power. The power to begin, the power to continue and the power to finish. You have now shown that you have all of three, these three powers. Today, assume the fourth power, to go forth. So graduates, I on behalf of the staff of the Faculty of Business and Humanities offer my congratulations. I now call on the President of Limerick Institute of Technology, Professor Vincent Canaan, to formally confer the LIT awards on the graduates. Harkyon the Institute, Bronum Dotnak Tani, Erf Olamori in the Institute, Atatarish and Kagdan Shin of Wanchamak, Oz Iram Gokurfer. The Fowler Mori Shin and Malahar, Kunabar Herbert Div Gofermul. On behalf of the Institute, I hereby confer awards on the learners of the Institute, 
who have achieved the standard for those awards. And I ask that those learners be presented to me so that I may formally present them with their parchment. I now call on President Professor Vincent Ganan to present the parchments and Ms. Cathy Jones, Head of the Department of Applied Social Sciences, to announce the students. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Business and Humanities, Department of Applied Social Sciences, and are worthy of the award Bachelor of Arts in Social Care Work, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Michael Collins. Caroline Darcy. Michelle Gallagher. Shane Karen in Abstensia. And finally, Antoinette Toomey. Well done, everyone. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Business and Humanities, Department of Applied Social Sciences, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Arts Honours in Social Care Work and I request you to present their parchments to them. Adebuni Adeyemi. <laughs> Laura Bain. <laughs> Ashling Barrett. Shane Bennis. <laughs> Jaroslaw Boruki. <laughs> Katrina Burke. Lorna Boyd in absentia. <laughs> Nicola Bridges. <laughs> Amy Brooks. <laughs> Michelle Brown. Sarah Burke. Aoife Cantrell. Noel Clancy. Emma Clifford. Andrea Costello.
Michelle Cotlin. Erica De Costa. Caroline Doherty. Orn Yudwan. James Featherston. Emma Finity. Ornia Fitzgerald. Jennifer Fitzpatrick. Karen Fitzpatrick. Louise Flannery. Claire Fletcher. Anita Ford. Laura Gleason. Aoife Griffin. Bernadette Hannon. Kaylee Hannon. Colleen Hanrahan Carrig. Cherie Hattie. Colette Hall. Anna Hayes. Nicole Hederman. Siobhan Higgins. Kira Hoban. Lara Horton. Teresa Humbasha. Rose Kelleher. Roisin Kelly. Aoife Keneally. Jessica Keo. Amber Kiley. Michelle Kimmel. Katie King. Louise Landers. Irene Lane in absentia. Deidre Leahy. Francis Lonergan. Amy Lynch. Anne 
Andrea Madden. <laughs> Hazel Martin. <laughs> Neve McMahon. <laughs> Kira McNamara. Neve Melican. <laughs> Kelly Maloney. <laughs> Laura Maloney. <laughs> Megan Maloney. Kira Malali. <laughs> Kaylee Milan. <laughs> Shannon Noonan. <laughs> Kate O'Brien. Ashling O'Connell. <laughs> Ashling O'Connor. <laughs> Elaine O'Connor. <laughs> Nadine O'Donoghue. Aoife O'Dwyer. <laughs> Alex O'Riordan. <laughs> Louise O'Riordan. <laughs> Victoria O'Shea. Christina O'Sullivan. <laughs> Lorna O'Sullivan. <laughs> Jennifer Plaisto. <laughs> Neve Quinn. Colum Raftery. <laughs> Owen Ranahan. <laughs> Anna Riand. <laughs> Lisa Roach. Luke Roach. <laughs> Joey Rowan. <laughs> Laura Russell. <laughs> Anya Ryan. Quiva Ryan. <laughs> Marie Ryan. <laughs> Yvonne Ryan. <laughs> Deirdre Sexton. Amy Sheehy. <laughs> Isabel Stack. <laughs> Ro
Rachel Stapleton. <laughs> Leah Stunden Fahey. <laughs> Amy Sweeney. <laughs> Ronan Tierney. Sarah Tierney. And Sabrina Tighe. Well done to all our social care graduates today. A big round of applause for you all again. Well done. I now call on President Professor Vincent Ganan to present the parchments and Dr. Katrina Murphy, Head of the Department of Food and Tourism, to announce the students. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed a programme in the Faculty of Business and Humanities in the Department of Food and Tourism and are worthy of the award of a higher certificate in arts, in culinary arts, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Elaine Bark. <laughs> Patrick Chesser. <laughs> Anita Canaan. Seamus Doohan. Zaniata Ilata. Christopher Inright. Natasha Gallagher. Adam Griffin. <laughs> Nicole Horgan, in absentia. <laughs> Kevin Hines, in absentia. <laughs> Eva Jazvak. <laughs> Paul Lee. Oliver Liddy. <laughs> Anita Lorrigan. <laughs> Darren McCulloch. <laughs> Maeve McMahon. Jane Murray. <laughs> Erica Norton. <laughs> Amanda O'Brien. <laughs> Dawn O'Brien. John O'Brien, <laughs> Stephen O'Donoghue, <laughs> Rebecca O'Mara, <laughs> Cahal O'Shea in absentia, John Patterson. Stacey Thomas, (laughs) 
Adrian Walsh. And Jody White. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed programs in the Faculty of Business and Humanities in the Department of Food and Tourism and are worthy of the award of a Bachelor of Arts in Culinary Arts and request you to present their parchments to them. Emily Badgergo. <laughs> Bailey Clancy in Abstentia. Yvonne Cochlin, Vicky Daverin, Martin Duansky in Abstentia, Stephanie Guerin, Sersha Ng, Jennifer McKay, Jared Madeley in Abstentia, Pavel Melanowski, Christine Malone in Abstentia, Ashley Martel in Abstentia, Apologies. Ashley Martel, <laughs> Rachel Parker. Sean Pierce, <laughs> Nikki Warby Jamieson, <laughs> Pavel Wadak, President, I present to you the following candidates who successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Business and Humanities in the Department of Food and Tourism and are worthy of the award of a National Traineeship in Professional Cookery and request you to present their parchments to them. Arthur Anderjack in Abstency. <laughs> Wesley Delacry. Ronan Halpin. <laughs> Emel Rajal in Abstentia. <laughs> Catherine Lyons. <laughs> Shane McMahon. Stephen McMahon, <laughs> Lucas Pajak, <laughs> and Joseph Sershan in Abstentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Business and Humanities in the Department of Food and Tourism and are worthy of the award of a higher certificate in arts in hospitality studies and request you to present their parchments to them. Ilana Anderson. <laughs> Veronica McCormick. Jessica McHugh in Abstentia. 
and Leanne Roach. President, I present to you the following candidates who successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Business and Humanities in the Department of Food and Tourism and are worthy of the award of a higher certificate in business in hotel front office management and request you to present their parchments to them. Rio Baran. Arne Bradley in absentia. Michaela Burke in absentia. Claire Byrne. Charlotte Kavanagh in absentia. Lillian Duggan in absentia. Deirdre Tuberty in absentia and Aileen Wilmot in absentia. <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidate who successfully completed a program in the Faculty of Business and Humanities, Department of Food and Tourism, and is worthy of the award of a Bachelor of Arts in Business Studies with Events, and I request you to present her parchment to her. Lorraine Queeley. President, I present to you the following candidates who successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Business and Humanities, Department of Food and Tourism, and are worthy of the award of a Bachelor of Arts Honours in Business Studies with Event Management, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Emily Brown. Claire Burke. Orla Cash, <laughs> Kaylee Dury, <laughs> Holly English, <laughs> Julie Fanneran. Sean Gilday, <laughs> Valerie Jack Carcota, <laughs> Laura Mangan, <laughs> Jody McNamara. Siobhan McSherry, <laughs> Eileen O'Donoghue, <laughs> Amy O'Donovan, <laughs> Katie O'Neill, Gentari Simulietta, <laughs> Dervla Smith, <laughs> and Kelly Ann Walsh. President, I now present to you the following candidates who successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Business and Humanities, Department of Food and Tourism, and are worthy of the award of a Bachelor of Arts in Business Studies with Travel and Tourism, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Clara Beasley, in absentia. Fiona Gallagher. Kohal Mistel in absentia. <laughs> Shannon O'Dwyer in absentia. And Holly Ray in absentia. 
President, I present to you the following candidates who successfully completed a program in the Faculty of Business and Humanities, Department of Food and Tourism, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Arts Honours in Business Studies with Travel and Tourism Management, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Joanne Burke. <laughs> Jermuth Carey. Kate Clancy, Rami Doma, Kira Fleming, Victoria Kazloskati. Emmett Keen, <laughs> Jennifer Lawton, <laughs> Nia of Lillis, <laughs> Brian Murphy. Priscilla Nato, <laughs> Katrina O'Connor, <laughs> and Aoife Quinn. And finally, President, I present to you the following candidate who successfully completed a program in the Faculty of Business and Humanities, Department of Food and Tourism, and is worthy of the award of a Master's of Arts by Research and request you present your parchments to her. Shan McInerney. Thank you, congratulations. We come now to the special awards ceremony for outstanding achievement, and I ask Tony Brazel from the governing body to join the president for these awards. Our first award today is the Brothers of Charity Services Limerick Award presented by Annie Conway and Sarah Meek of the Brothers of Charity. The Brothers of Charity Services Limerick Award is for overall excellence on the Bachelor of Arts Honours in Social Care Work. And the award goes to Noelle Clancy. Our next award is the SCI Award presented by Cathy Jones of LIT. The SC SCI Award is for 
academic excellence on the Bachelor of Arts Honours in Social Care Work. And the award goes to Katrina Burke. Our next award is the Charlotte Mansfield Walsh Commemorative Award, presented by Elaine Slattery of Kamer Kame. The Charlotte Mansfield Walsh Commemorative Award is for excellence in psychology on the Bachelor of Arts Honours in Social Care Work. And the award goes to Ashling O'Connell. We switch now to the Department of Food and Tourism Awards, and the first award is the Strand Hotel Award, which will be presented by Claire Kennedy of the Strand Hotel. <laughs> the recipient sent his apologies this morning, so Marion Duggan of LIT will accept the award and hopefully will pass it along. And the... <laughs> The, re the recipient of the Strand Hotel Award, the recipient is Aaron Bradley. Our next award is the Savoy Hotel Award, presented by Dr. Dr. Katrina Murphy of LIT. The Savoy Hotel Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Arts Honours in Business Studies with Event Management. And the award goes to Eileen O'Donoghue. Our next award is the Shannon Heritage Award, presented by John Ruddle of Shannon Heritage. The Shannon Heritage Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Arts Honours in Business Studies with Travel and Tourism Management. And the award goes to Kate Clancy. We have two awards from Fall to Ireland this year, presented by Dr. Dean Panter of Fall to Ireland. The first of our Fall to Ireland awards is for excellence on the higher certificate in arts, in culinary arts. And the award goes to Eva Yaztak.
The second Fall to Ireland Award is for excellence on the Higher Certificate in Arts in Hospitality Studies. And the award goes to Leanne Roach. Our next award is the Irish Hotel Federation Award, presented by Dermot Kelly of the South Court Hotel. The Irish Hotel Federation Award is for excellence on the national traineeship in professional cookery. And the award goes to Catherine Lyons. Our final award today is the Yes Chef Award, presented by Shane Smith of Yes Chef Ireland. The Yes Chef Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Arts in Culinary Arts, and the award goes to Searsha Ing. I now call on the President of Limerick Institute of Technology, Professor Vincent Canaan, to address you. A carja to ask and don't arm the chan you, August Boyt Loma, a kid me a falcha, a court galair. Friends, you're very welcome here this morning. You may have thought that you were just about to get out the door. I could see it in your faces. But you're going to have to stay for another little while to listen to, to me. Uh, hopefully I have some important things to say about LIT, about uh, the future of higher education in this country, uh, and to wish all the graduates all the very best. Because, of course, today is all about the graduates, and uh, we are delighted to recognise you, uh, our newest graduates. Uh, it's a special day for you, it's a special day for your families and friends, but it's also a very special day for LIT. So these are the days that reveal to us the value of the work that everyone here has put in over the last number of years. You, the graduates, your families, and the staff of LIT. This is the one time in the year when we come together as a single community to recognise our own for the commitment, the ability, yes, and the perseverance uh, you have shown in getting to this stage. So to the parents, the guardians, the spouses, and the families of the graduates, I also say heartiest congratulations. You too are part of our community. 
And I'm sure that there were times when you didn't think this day would ever arrive, but it has, thankfully. But maybe now the graduates could stand up, turn to your families, uh, and give those families a well-deserved round of applause. So. Very good. You, you graduates, you have received your education from an institution whose roots in technical and artistic education go right back to the foundation of the Limerick Athenaeum in 1852. You will now join a long line of graduates who have gone before you to take your place in society and to help those who have gone before you who have indeed shaped that society. And this is the proud legacy you can take with you now. This is something that you can take great pride in. But this ceremony marks the transition point from your being part of our student community to now being part of our community of LIT graduates. And I know that the staff here behind me are very proud of each and every one of you, as indeed I am. And I hope you share that pride and that your families and communities do too. But I'd also like, on your behalf, to thank all the staff of LIT, academic and non-academic, who have helped you along the way. So sincere thanks to all of you gathered here today. So you graduate today knowing you have a good education, knowing you have a respected qualification, which is recognised by employers worldwide. We pride ourselves in developing our programmes with industry, with communities, with state agencies and others. And you will benefit from this, as indeed will your families and your communities. Indeed, we believe that the economy and the state will be changed by you. You are emerging in an economy that has improved immensely since the time you entered LIT. In fact, on Tuesday morning, the IrishJobs.ie Jobs Index showed Limerick to be outperforming every other region in the country in terms of new job vacancies, with a 43% increase in job vacancies in the third quarter of the year compared to the same period in 2016, and a 22% increase on the same quarter of this year. Now, this is all very good news. It's due to high-end employers such as Northern Trust and Regeneron expand in their operations. It's good news for us all. But it also spreads across the social, cultural, food, culinary, hotel and tourism business. We are delighted that Adair Manor has, is reopening. Uh, some of us have had the pleasure of being out there, but uh, I'll talk, I can't say. But it's great to see that. We held the first dedicated career event for food and tourism this year. That is what the demand is happening in, in the food and tourism sector. And in fact, the relationship with Air Manor goes to the fact that there are chefs trained here uh, over the summer in our culinary kitchens. So we're very linked in to what is happening uh, across uh, our work. And when you look at those job figures, LIT is a major factor. Companies invest when there are graduates available in the areas they need them in. And one of our hallmarks is that we are plugged in to the industries and service providers in this region. We deliver the kind of education that employers need. You will hit the ground running because you have the skills as well as the knowledge to make a difference in the workplace straight away. And about 9 out of 10 people graduating from LIT last year either went into employment or further education. And the prospects awaiting you are now better than those that have awaited many of the classes that went before you in recent times. But we haven't taken everybody with us on this journey. 
I spoke during the year about a report that had 17 unemployment black spots in Limerick. At the same time, as at that point in time, 17 foreign direct investments had been announced for Limerick in the previous two years. 17 FDI investments with 17 unemployment black spots. So we haven't taken our entire society with us, and it's a point I will return to, because it's the first of my buts for today. But that's why social care, social care workers are so important to our society working sometimes at the margins of society to help all in society to try and attain their potential and to help them along the way. So we are graduating a, a large number of social care workers today and for better or worse there is a huge need for every, each and every single one of them and I wish them all the very best in their careers ahead. Because we are entering into this period of what you might call a virtuous cycle for this region where investors come here to capitalise on the assets the region has. And chief amongst those assets are the highly qualified graduates like yourselves. And those FDI announcements of recent times highlighted that factor as the main determinant of their decision to come to Ireland. Talent, not tax. Of course, the more they invest, the more economic activity increases and the more jobs are created. And the work you will do in your careers will also give rise to further employment. Now, I'm very pleased that we in LIT have been successful in having 34 million promised to us by the Department of Education and Skills this year for two major capital projects. You know, I'm going to say that again. 34 million, because it's a very nice big figure, and I like big figures. So we're going to have a new 14 million campus, it's an engineering focused campus out in Kuna, up the road, and we now have in the recent weeks the announcement of a 20 million science and IT building here in Moylish. These two projects are transformative for LIT, and transformative for all facets of LIT, not just engineering and science and IT, because we will be decanting from Moylish here into these new buildings and leaving space for new culinary kitchens, for new opportunities in social care, and new opportunities in events, etc. This is for the transformation of all of LIT. And when you couple these projects with what's happening with the new Northern Distributor Road, which will form a knowledge corridor between our Kuna campus and terminating the National Technology Park in Plassey, these are all developments which will really help to keep that virtuous cycle going. They will help to keep the economy developing. They will help to sustain the jobs which will underpin many of your careers. And we do this because Limerick has learned to do things better. It has learned to collaborate. It has learned to share knowledge. And it has learned to drive that sharing and uh, knowledge to create a better region. We will be able to ensure that more industry will want to locate here. More employers will stay here and more downstream jobs will be created. So I think the benefit of these, this 34 million that this government decisions have, have made will be felt for some time to come. And the investment the state is making in us will pay off in spades. Of course, many of our graduates here today will also go on to do further postgraduate study. And we had a master's by research here this morning, which is always a great uh, outcome from, uh, from the Institute. We have over 100 people doing research postgraduates here at the moment across a large number of areas. And Marion has highlighted some of the new research areas that we are expanding into. But we're also supporting entrepreneurs. We have over 100 entrepreneurs that we are helping at the moment. Because at each of our educational campuses, we also co-locate an enterprise centre. And many of the businesses we support are receiving Enterprise Ireland funding through ourselves in LIT. But I come to my second but. All of this is very positive. But there is this second but. So while the capital deficit capital funding deficit that the Institute of Technology sector has experienced for nigh on a decade is finally starting to be addressed. This is only half the picture. 
The other half is how we keep funding higher education in such a way that people from right across our society can access those facilities. There is no point in building new facilities if we make higher education less accessible to people. To make the state's investment in our infrastructure work, we need people to use that infrastructure to learn and to develop and to reach their potential. It must be accessible to all those who would derive benefit from it. This is the question that continues to rear its head as the Arachnus considers the Cassell's report, a report which is about the examination of options for funding higher education into the future. The backdrop to the Cassell's report is that larger numbers of young people than ever before in the history of the state are looking for higher education. And more jobs are being created which require higher education qualifications. That means there are more people who have more demands on Irish higher education. And that in turn means that more funding will be required because the funding that is available at the moment cannot sustain the demand that is coming down the tracks. This is what a funding crisis looks like, and we have one here in Ireland, and it's pretty stark. Cassells found that the system in Ireland needed an investment of a billion euros over the next 15 years, above and beyond current funding, just to get back to the standard that we had in 2008. That is how much has changed in that period. Now, the Cassells report came up with three options to fund students in the future, but for me, there is only one critical point in the Cassells report. The outcome must ensure increased access to higher education and not lead to a decrease in that access. Because this is what we all need. Now, I'm not sure how many of you graduating here today would have to think twice about going to college if you knew that you would have to repay a very significant loan for the fees that you accumulated whilst here. A loan that would probably cost in the tens of thousands and take you years to pay off. Because this is one of the options that has now been seriously considered by the Arachnus Committee. Now I know there are people here sitting in front of me who would not be here if we had fees and an income contingent loan system to help to pay for them. And that tells me that a system has the potential, such a system has the potential to reduce access by removing the ability of some people to get into higher education. Now I don't want that, and I don't think this country needs that. This is the system that's what operates in the UK and uh, particularly England at the moment. And all the latest research, such as London Economics and the IFS study, shows that access in the UK is starting to go backwards. Recent reports there have made findings that we should pay heed to. And I am worried that funding higher education solely on the reintroduction of fees alongside an income attention loan system in Ireland will serve neither individuals nor the country because it will discriminate against those who simply do not want to take on large debts at the very start of their careers just to attend higher education. It will reduce net earnings for graduates. It will make certain professions, including social care, less attractive and will discriminate against parents who take time to have children and to rear them. So if we could see that the UK has made mistakes and has stored up problems for itself, why should we in Ireland make the same mistakes and store up the same problems? Now, I'm not saying that loans have a role to play in funding education. We all know that credit unions and banks have been funding higher education for a long time. But what I am saying is that introducing fees with a loan system to blanket fund students means that you are fundamentally rebalancing the financing of the higher education from our state into the private realm. It is starting to make the education you received a commodity rather than a right. Because graduates tend to have a lower use of the state's medical facilities. They tend to earn more, pay more tax, they require less social and housing supports, and they are more likely to generate employment. 
In short, higher education is a win-win and should be treated as such. Our new economy demands highly skilled workers and we do need to fund quality teaching and learning. And this is imperative after years of erosion when we saw student numbers increase by 34% in seven years, while core staffing dropped by 12%. And recovering from that situation is what Cassell's report is concerned with. But people cannot be left behind. No one, no state can afford to leave people behind. And we've already got to that point with our 17 unemployment black spots. Because if someone gets a higher education, whether it's an apprenticeship, a level 6, a level 7, a level 8, this brings huge benefits to society. It is transformative for certain cohorts of society, but the point is that the society, our society, is the big winner overall with higher education rather than just the individual as is now currently portrayed in the media. So we're at a crucial point in the future direction of the entire higher education system. And the decisions made now will have huge implications for us all, our community, this community, into the future. I'm nearly there, I'm nearly ranted out, but hold back. <laughs> but I'm going to leave you now with a, with a story. And everyone, every single person here graduating today has a story. But this story I'm going to tell is about a student we'll call Patrick. Patrick had the opportunity after secondary school to go to higher education. But it didn't really hold him back. He worked as a truck driver, as his father had before him. He married and had three children with his wife, Margaret, and they built a good life together. But there was something there in Patrick, some unfulfilled ambition, some feeling that he could do more. So when circumstances allowed, Patrick sat down with Margaret and they decided that he would go back to college. This is a working man with a wife and three children and a mortgage. He came to college here in LIT with the benefit of a state grant. If there had been a loan system in place, how could he have done this? Given up his job to go back to college with a mortgage and three children, who in their right minds is going to give that man a loan? Well, you don't give that man a loan, you give the man a grant. And his family, his community, our society reaps the benefit. And that's what I mean when I say that access is important and that we all benefit from it. But back, back to Patrick. Patrick. Patrick commuted from Thurless every day. In fact, he cycled from his home for six miles into Thurless, got the train and biked it up to Moylish here. He studied hard, he never missed an assignment, he never missed a deadline, he never missed a class, just like all the graduates here today. <laughs> and Patrick got through. And Patrick graduated yesterday from LIT in mechanical engineering. I think it's a wonderful story. And because of his wonderful story, he was on drive time last night uh, on RTE News along with myself, and we're trying to highlight this stuff. Because ultimately, when I talk about higher education and funding systems, people might switch off. But Patrick is our society. Patrick is now a graduate of this college, and we're very, very proud of him, as we're proud of everybody here and the stories about it. Because this place, this institution, is about people. And funding systems have to ultimately be about people. So today really though is about celebration and reward. You've all done it. You've all made it through. Everyone here in LIT wishes you all the very best in life for the years ahead. We hope you remember us fondly on occasion. And that you stay in touch with us through our alumni organization. Goharjas of live Goler. Congratulations from the heart to all of you, Goramila Mayagov Goler. And I hope you've had the time of your lives.
Thank you all for coming here this morning to join us for this conferring ceremony. The official photographers are located outside on the, the main street area, and we'd like you to join us for some light refreshments afterwards in the green rooms, which is the next building down here. I now declare this conferring ceremony closed. Please stand for the academic procession.